And so without further ado, let's go to the Zoom machine and say hello to our first guest of the day, the recently victorious Nicholas Maximov, who's kind enough to join us. What's up, Nicholas? How are you? How are you? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. How's everything? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, it's great to have you on the show for the first time. And I see you repping uh, Ellie Secback reporting. The man. Yeah, yeah, I kind of just picked it up. Yeah, Ellie's the man, though. He is the man. uh, Supporting uh, us in the academy for a long time, so. I love Ellie. He's cool. He's a great guy. He is. He is an OG of the fight game. So it's uh, it's great to have you on. Congrats on the win. Uh, a lot went into that fight for you because you got bumped all the way up to the co-main event. So, you know, a little more attention and eyeballs. Can I ask you, after all that, like in hindsight, I, I saw what you said at the press conference, all that you were excited, you were grateful. But did you feel a little extra added pressure because you were <laughs> fighting in the quote-unquote co-main on Saturday? <clears throat> no, not at all. I think he had the pressure... Uh, you know, he came in as the favorite. He came in uh, with a loss, too, looking like he was trying to avenge a loss. Um, he had all these knockouts and whatnot. And then um, I think he had a little bit more pressure than I did. I didn't really feel any pressure, you know. Um, I felt fine. I was just happy. I was excited to be there. Uh, what about the fact that you were the underdog? I was surprised by that. You? <laughs> yeah, I just don't think people really realize or know who I am or was at the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um I think my team and everyone believed in me, you know, ever since the start. But other than that, yeah, I, I can. I, it was kind of weird, you know. Um, maybe what was it? 2000, 2019, I was uh, working for ESPN, and I was going to work on my first uh, basketball game as a sideline reporter, and I was super nervous because it's a really big deal for me. And so I called up this guy. I don't know if you know who he is. I think you do, Zach Rosenfield. You know Zach, and he gave me a pep He's talk. Man about situational pressure. He gave me this pep talk and it has stuck with me. And I heard you got the same pep talk about situ- situational pressure on Saturday, or maybe it was Friday, right? Am I, am I accurate with that? It was that? Saturday morning. I was at Starbucks and he gave, I talked to him for about 10 minutes about it. It was great. It's a good, it was a good call. It was a great story. Man, I thought about it the whole day. About the, did he tell you the story about the golf and uh, you know how it's yeah. just another day? It's just another Tuesday, right? Another Tuesday. That's and that's what I said in my post fight press conference. Yes. I'm like, it was just another Tuesday at sparring. That's <laughs> I where I got that. it from. And when you yeah, break it down cool. like I, that, right? When you break it down like that, it alleviates a lot of the stress. It really is simple. Um, you know who really started that for me was Chill because I, I wrestled up in Oregon and I trained with Chill a little bit. And Chill's like the only difference is there's just a few cameras and a few more people watching you. Other than that, it's the same thing you're doing on Monday through Friday. Amen. You know what's it, that's the only difference. And, and that kind of stuck with me. And it's like, I'm just trying, it's just another training camp. It's just another training session with a different guy. You know, um, we, we, that's how we kind of train at the Academy when we box and whatnot, you know, we, uh, we fight like that all the time. So to me, it was just another, uh, just another training session with another guy. So when did you meet Chael? Oh, probably, uh, 2016. 2016. Yeah. How old are you now? He, I'm 24. He had the submission undergrounds yeah. and I did the second one yeah. with like John Jones and Dan Henderson. That was the first time I met him. And then he would kind of come in the wrestling room when I was in college a little bit. Damn. So you met him when you were, if my math is correct, like 18, 18. Yeah. 18 wow. years old. And I kind of went to his gym. He was like, it was Gracie Baja Portland at the time. Yeah. Now it's American top team Portland, but I went there. Paige Van Zandt was there. Austin Vanderford was there. Um, it was a pretty killer team. And, and so uh, at that point, did you know you wanted to be a fighter? Oh, yeah. Even when I started, I wanted to be a fighter. You know, um, when I, like 12 years old, I knew I kind of wanted to do this for the rest of my life. What, why? I, like what happened but, at 12? It, it wasn't the fighting aspect. It was the training. Like I, I said it the other day, these guys train to fight. You know, we train as martial artists because it's our way of life. Mm-hmm. You know, even if I wasn't a competitive like a fighter, I'd still be doing jiu-jitsu. Or, or karate or any of that stuff, just because I don't do it to fight. I do it because this is like my, the medicine. You know what I mean? It's just like my way of getting everything out. Like if I want to go to the gym, I won't think about anything except training. Mm. And I, it's just something relaxing about it. You know what I'm saying? It's just the way you can practice martial arts can just be really peaceful. Mm-hmm. Who, um, who introduced you to martial arts? To be honest, it was the uh, Bruce Lee marathon that was happening on like TBS or something like Come that on. when I was 12 really? years old and I was just watching it. And uh, it was like Enter the Dragon, I think. And I watched like all his um, Bruce Lee's movies. And then like a couple weeks later, I watched like all these Jackie Chan movies. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm going to just start doing karate or some shit. And I talked to my dad and he got me into it. And ever since then, I've just been going up with it. 
So prior to that, you did no martial arts, like as a little kid, none of that. You didn't come from a background of family. It was just watching those movies that really got you into it. Yeah, Bruce Lee, you know what it was? It was weird. I was 12 years old and I didn't really understand philosophy, but Bruce Lee's philosophy really spoke to me. It was just something about him that I really enjoyed and really liked. And uh, um, listening to him talk was just pretty, pretty uh, special, you know? What kind of kid were you? Like, did you get in trouble a lot? Did you fight a lot? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, ha- I was all right. I wasn't that great. I wasn't that bad. I got kicked out of school a couple of times for fighting, Oh, but that was like really young. Um, but other than that, after that, I was a pretty good kid. You know, I didn't, I didn't really like doing that. I didn't really like, that's why I kind of want to do martial arts. Cause I didn't like fighting people, but I like training. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like one of those weird balances. So I wanted to learn how to fight just in case anything ever happened, you know? Um, but I played like football and stuff and all that. I always was a contact sport type of guy. So, uh, so when you watch the movies and you get into it, um, do you realize right away, like, oh my, like this is for me. I, I found the thing that I love. I found the thing that I want to be a part of for the rest of my life. Did you realize right away? Yeah, I think so. It's just, I mean, I'm sure you're like that too. There's like a little spark that hits. Something yeah. just connects and you're like, it's like that gut feeling like, oh, wow. I like that. And then you just kept doing and doing and watching those movies. And then eventually, you know, you start training and like, dude, this is awesome. And then you get deeper in the, you know, all the martial art movies and whatnot. Um, So yeah, that was just kind of one of something that clicked with me. And so when do you go from Oregon to California? Sorry. So I I actually started in California. Sorry. I actually started, it's dry here in Vegas. (laughs) Um, so actually, I I lived I was um I li- I was raised in California my whole life in Chico okay and whatnot and I'd go d- back and forth from Chico to Stockton to go train and whatnot and then I went to Oregon for college for gotcha. about two and a half three years okay um but weren't you born in Oregon went too back. yeah I was born in Bend but I mean I I was like there for like a few months you okay know what gotcha I mean? gotcha and, um so that was kind of like I was born in Bend Oregon but raised in like Chico and then always training in California, but I just went up to Oregon just to wrestle. You know, that was the big thing and, um, trained out there and whatnot, but I was always trying to train at the Academy, you know, uh, in Stockton and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah. Um, yeah, I went just to Oregon. I went to like Clackamas community college. I don't know if you heard of that. We were big rivals with the John Jones is actually community college. Okay. Iowa central. Interesting. So that kind of actually put my eyes on like wrestling in college was watching John and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's how it all worked out. How old were you the first time you went to the Nick Diaz Academy? Uh, like 13 and 14. Did you know who they were? Oh yeah. I was a big, I was a big, uh, uh, Nate fan, but I was a really big Nick fan. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I really liked Nate, but I really, <clears throat> Nate, but I really liked Nick. Um, something about his style. I just really liked. Um, just his fighting style. You know, I didn't even really care about what they I, what they said after in interviews and stuff like that. I just liked how they fight. Um, and it really just spoke to me, you know, just how they do jiu-jitsu, how they box, all that stuff. Was it a little uh, surreal for you as a young kid? You're there. I mean, they're at the gym, right? You probably see them. Maybe not every time, but sometimes. Is that surreal? Yeah, it, dude, they're, they're pretty, it was pretty intimidating, you know, being a little young 13, 14-year-old <laughs> kid. And what's even scarier is their training partners because they all get beat up all the time and yeah. they all fight each other. So then they see me come in and then they all just want to beat me up because I'm the new guy. <laughs> and it was just, it was kind of, it was pretty rough at first. Like the training, you get beat up, like no doubt. Um, I, I I see black belts come in all the time. Nowadays I get tapped out by blue belts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a, it's a hardcore gym, but it's like a, mar- I like it because it's a martial artist gym. Right. You know, we train martial arts, not just fighting. It's all about martial arts. So it's a deeper philosophy than just fighting. It seems um, like, especially uh, Nathan now, like he's really taking you under his wing. He even shows up to the apex events. <clears throat> I mean, it does, you know, it's it's not a, a common thing, as you know, for him to show up to these, but he really, really seems to like you and think highly of you. Why do you yeah. think that is? Why do you think they like you so much and believe in you so much? Well, it's cool because he doesn't do that for anybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? He just does that for the homies and uh well, it's because I think I train like how they train. I do what they do. You know what I mean? I don't really just ask questions. If they tell me to jump, you know, I'm going to say how high. Uh-huh. It's just one of those things that's a respect thing. With uh, our head instructor, Randy Spence, if he tells me, hey, put on a gi today. Hey, put on, go put on your boxing shoes. I'm going to go do it. 
Okay. Hey, go run five, six, seven miles. I'm going to go do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be like a robot or nothing, but it's also at the same time, these guys built a recipe and I'm going to go follow it. Mm-hmm. I think Nick and Nate are the, arguably the greatest martial artists to ever grace the octagon. You know, Nick won every title, if you really think about it. Like he won Strike Force. You know, he beat Talking Origami when he was the man. And we'd like, see, I think Nick was the man. <clears throat> um, so if they tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm always, I, I train with them all the time. If not, I try to add more training sessions because I'm trying to catch up to them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's never catching up to those guys. But I'm, that's like the goal is just try to ca- like be under their wing, be as good as them one day, and then bring somebody else under me like that and just keep the lineage going. Because some of these teams fall off. Mm. Some of these teams have a st- stellar year, and then they're done and they fall off. But our academy has been around, it seems like, forever. And there's always guys that were fighting strike for us or the ultimate fighter and whatnot. So I just want to keep the lineage going. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I got big shoes to fill, but that's part of the game and that's part of the journey. You know, you got to love that stuff. Um, yeah. Like when people ask for like co-main event, it's like, that's like cool pressure. That's mm-hmm. awesome. You know, that's what I want. Just so when it's down the line and you know, you're fine for a world title, it's the same, same shit, you know? So yeah, it's a lot to fill, but it's cool. Do you feel, you know, because it feels like you're the, you're like that new, you know, guy coming through the 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 team, right? Like you're the guy. You're the guy that everyone's talking about, the latest product of the Nick Diaz Academy. Is there pressure that comes with that? Like you want to live up to whatever their expectations are, right? And whatever they feel you can become. Do you feel like, man, I can't let these guys down because they've really done a lot for me? Yeah, I want to exceed those expectations, you know, out of everybody. That's the whole goal. And if if I don't do it, I'm, I want to die trying, mm. you know? And if they see me doing that, then I can live with that. Um, I know they, they probably have high hopes and everything and I'm going to keep trying to fulfill them, but it's like, I'm, I'm going to either do it or die trying. And they know that. And I think that's why they like it. You know what I'm saying? Like being like a writer and that's what it's all about. Just getting the job done. And if you can get the job done, then you got nothing to worry about. You know what I love about your story? Uh, you get on the contender series, short notice, you're an 85 er you fight at heavyweight for goodness sakes, you win that. And then I'll never forget you win that. And in the back, they're like, Hey, uh, congratulations, Nicholas. Uh, we're going to give you an ultimate fighter contract now. Like, what the hell? I thought we just went through this thing to get into the UFC. Now you have to go through another thing. And I know there were some talks back and forth, but essentially you were like, nah, I'm not going, right? You're like, I'm not doing the ultimate fighter. And you eventually make it to the UFC without going to the ultimate fighter. So good on you. Why did you Thank decide you. to not go the ultimate fighter route? Well, you know what's funny is I don't think, I think everyone's like afraid to say no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone, and then I said no, because I'm like, I'm not going to go on a reality show with a bunch of dudes and just wait in the house all day and fight each other and try to make, and it's just weird. Cause like all these guys want to be buddy, buddy and friends with each other. And it's like our, my mentality, my whole life and our mentality is like, I don't want to be friends with any of these guys. So why do I want to be in a house for six, eight weeks? knowing I'm going to fight all these guys and be all pissed off and cut weight the whole time. Like it just didn't sound like my type of thing. And, uh, and then you saw the ultimate fighter fight this weekend. And I was like, I'd smoke both those guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, that's cool. Like, that's why exactly why I didn't do it. Um, and yeah, with contender, it's like, I know it wasn't a great fight, but I'm like, I'm fighting a guy who was reached the heavyweight limit. What did you want me to do? Like, what did, <laughs> but and crazy. same with like my last two fights, I'm like, these guys are all eight. No first round finisher guys. And I'm like, do people just want me to stand right in front of them and just go trade for trade? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I'm trying to, get to the top, you know? And, uh, yeah, people are funny, man. It's just, it's weird. That was a weird experience. Cause I'm like, I, th- I thought I did him a favor or not a favor, but like I fought this guy on two weeks notice, a heavyweight. And then I don't get the contract. You know, I get the ultimate fighter thing. And I was like, it was like kind of like a backhanded like compliment. Yes. It was that. very bizarre. Were you worried yeah. that by saying no, you, you know, get put on ice or something like that? Yeah. I, I kind of was for a minute. Cause it, it it was hard because I was going to like either take fights on short notice and these weird little promotions. And it's like, do I risk it and gamble it? Yeah. Or do I just keep waiting? You know, and I just kept waiting and waiting and it, eventually it all worked out. But, uh, it was kind of scary for a little bit. Cause I'm like, for like five, six months, I'm like, well, what do I do? Cause I, I'm not going to fight an easy guy. Cause I just fought on contender. Right. So you're probably going to give me a UFC guy who just got cut or something. And I was going to probably have to fight one of those guys. And I'm like, well, that would suck if I lost. Right. You know? Of course. Not think I'm going to lose, but um, that was kind of my mentality. I was like, that'd be a fucking bummer. 
but it, eventually it worked out, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, I think you made the right call. By the way, uh, how, how's your eye? I couldn't help but notice when you took off the glasses. Yeah. I, I sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I did. The worst part is I get like, like when I wake up, it's so dry and I like, I feel like dry skin around it and I can't really get anything out of it. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. It's, okay. uh, it'll be good in like a week or two, hopefully get back to training and get back on the high horse, you know? Are you happy with your performance on Saturday? Yeah, dude, I think I did everything better than him. I thought I won all three rounds except the knee. Um, I just took a bad shot, but I felt like I was out boxing him. I kicked him. Um, on the ground, I was, you know, just I broke the record for most takedowns, if you ask me. Um, I control him. I did everything. I just had to be careful because after I got cut, I just couldn't. The blood's just, yeah. you know what I'm saying, my eye the whole time, so I couldn't see. So I was like, do I risk it and kind of play it on my feet or do I just try to go the safe route? And I'm like, you know, this guy's too dangerous to just, you know, fuck around with, <laughs> you know, he just knocks everybody dead. So why do that? Like, it, is, it is a crazy thing in our sport. Like even Strickland got this a little bit in the main event. They're like, Oh, it's boring. And I get it. It's entertainment for us at home, but you guys are still in there with another human being. You have to do the smartest thing to win a fight at the end of the day, because there is such a big gap between winning and losing. And you can take a step back and so that's why, unless it's like a total, like it, it kind of drives me nuts when people are, you know, ragging, let's say on you, oh, that was, you know, you were wrestling too much. Like the, the name of the game is to get the W and not to stand yeah. there like a, like a dummy and get punched and then get knocked out or get cut up. So yeah. I wouldn't listen to any of the, the hate that you made. I don't, I think it's hilarious. I kind of just go through comments and I said, my mom and my mom sends me the most comments out of anyone, like the most <laughs> negative stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, I, she'll just laugh and she'll kind of like play with me, like make it as like an inside joke. You know what I'm saying? And be like, Oh, you're boring. Nick. Da, 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 uh, I just start man. laughing. And, but like, it's little banner, but it's like tough love. It's good. Cause you need it for this sport. Cause sure. people are brutal. The MMA fans are brutal. Yeah. They're assholes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Most of them are assholes. They they love you on Monday and hate you on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's, it's all good though. Yeah, it's just it's it's something I'm used to. I don't mind it. You know, being with Nate and Nick too. If people already hate them, they're already gonna hate me. Yeah, it's just how it's built in. It's just the system, you know. Um, by the way, it's all good though. Could you hear Nate in the fight? Yeah, you know what's funny? I heard him in the back each round, and each round he got closer and closer. <laughs> and eventually, in the third round, he was damn near in the cage. With me, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool!" Like him, he's about to hop in and fight this fool for me. You know, uh, it was cool. Um, Gilbert was there too. Uh, Gilbert Melendez, he's a really good. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Gilbert, he's a really good coach, though. He's like a. He might not even be a better coach than he is fighter. He he's so like detailed with everything and breakdowns. Man, he's a. I like Gilbert a lot and Scrap Pack there. They're a yep. great team. A uh, great analyst as well, man. You got a lot of OGs looking after you. I mean, it's a pretty special Pretty group. lucky. Yeah, man. Uh, and I know you appreciate that. It's uh, it's an amazing thing. So in your mind, like, is I saw something pop up on TMZ. You want Hamza next? I mean, I don't think, I think he's booked, but did you say that today? You wanted Hamza? Yeah, because, well, it's just funny because everyone, he's literally called out everyone in the middle way in the welterweight division and no one's saying anything. It's like, Someone's got to say something. Yeah. Like he can't just walk over, or like I said, die trying. He's walking over everybody in the whole division. He's literally talking over everybody and nobody's saying a thing. And it's just like, how are you just going to let him say that the whole time? He's literally, I see him call out everybody every single day. And I'm like, is anyone going to say anything to him? You know, it's just like everyone, I, I know he's a good fighter, but it's like, I mean, at least try. Is someone going to try to beat him? You know what I mean? It's just, it's funny to me how the MMA world, it, they're all athletes, it seems like. No one's like a fighter fighter anymore. Everyone's like an athlete now. Mm. So they don't really have that mentality of like, oh, I'll fight that guy. They're like, oh, I'll let this guy pass me. And then I'll, maybe I'll fight the guy next to him or something like that. It's just funny how the game works nowadays. It's not how it used to be, So you, in my opinion. So you would take that fight. You would be down. You think you're ready for that? Hell yeah. Why not? <laughs> By the I'm way, trying. I feel like uh, I feel like you've heard this, and I say it with the utmost respect. You, you've heard that you sound exactly like your Diaz brother, right? Like, that's NorCal. Okay, that's that NorCal okay. slang. <laughs> no, I've always talked like this. Is we everyone talks like this? No, I just a Nor no one really comes from NorCal, mm -hmm. like us. You know what I'm saying? Not make it to the UFC, so I don't think people really hear people. So we just associated you know with the Diaz brothers. 
Oh yeah, but everyone's just like talks like this because we don't understand. It's a NorCal it. accent. Yes, I love it, yeah. man. I love it. I feel like it's like their their spirit coming through and yeah. returning to our lives. It's amazing. And yeah. and uh, I don't mean to sound like anybody. No, no, it's a, just it's an accent. Even your hand yes. movements and stuff remind me of them. Which again, I, I'm saying with the utmost. I love those guys, but okay, it's, it's, it's all great. good. It's yeah. great. <laughs> it's amazing. I love everything about yeah, it. Um, Maximov, Thank by you. the way, your your family is from. Russia, but you're obviously you didn't grow up in Russia. And I thought for a second maybe Russian Jew. Maximov sounded like a Russian Jew. Is there any Russian Jew in you? It is. Yeah. It's a Russian Jewish name. I did the 23 and Me, and that's how I, we knew we were Russian. But the 23 and Me said I was a lot more Jewish actually than I was Spent. almost anything. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, my great great grandparents came over from Russia, and like I forgot when, but they came over as like doctors or something like that. And then wow. the Arlenians just came down and. And whatnot, but yeah, no, it's a pretty cool little history, actually. Man. So, first Jewish member of the uh, the Nick Diaz Academy. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> if you don't, yeah, mind. yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I'll take that and run with that. <laughs> and you say your dad is your hero. Why is your dad your hero? Oh, dude, my dad's kind of taught me how to like be a man and everything. He's kind of taught me a lot about life. A lot of stuff I didn't want to do when I was younger. He kind of just helped me through everything. You know. Um, He's a, uh, whatever his gut feeling says, I usually go with type thing. You know what I'm saying? He's, um, he, he deals with all my stuff. He, he's like my biggest supporter. Yeah. He's a, uh, my dad's the man. Was he at the fight on Saturday? Oh yeah. He's never missed a fight, a wrestling match, a football game. He's one of those guys. Oh really? He never wow. missed a thing. That is amazing. Yeah. He's a, uh, he's a, oh yeah, dude. He'll, uh, take the shirt off his back for me. You know, he, he's that type of guy. Does your mom go too? Oh, heck no. I put too much. It's too much pressure for her. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean, you know how it is. I, everyone's moms are like, they don't want to see their kid get hit yeah, in the yeah. face. You know, I don't blame them. I wouldn't want my kid to fight, you know? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I don't blame her. By the way, was it a trip to go back to the apex? Cause that was probably your first time fighting it. Right. I mean, since contenders. Yeah. I like, um, it's cool. I like fighting in, uh, like the T-Mobile was pretty sweet. Yeah. That was pretty surreal. It, it was even more cool about that. It was Nick's comeback fight. Yeah. So I think that was the coolest part about the whole week. For sure. And the whole camp, I was training with them the whole time, you know? Um, that was pretty surreal. That was pretty crazy. Has he been to the gym recently? <clears throat> Is he training again? Um, He's out and about. He's just doing his thing. I think he's just, you know, uh, enjoying life and uh, just, you know, doing his thing, doing yeah. Nick's stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a character. He's I, a good guy. I saw he's got the big beard now. I, I know, like man. it. Respect. Yeah, it's a different look, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for I sure. recognize him. Uh, he's got so, the long hair. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, he looks yeah. like Forrest Gump. Um, <laughs> so, perfect world, when do you return? As soon as possible. Hopefully, um, I already talked to the UFC about fighting, so I don't know if I can say anything, but oh, damn. I, uh, probably sooner rather than later. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Hey, man, I wish you the best. I love the, the moment you said no to Ultimate Fighter. I was like, this is my kind of guy. I love this. Tell them what you want. Follow your own path. Create your own path. Uh, continued success to you. Much respect. Big win on Saturday. I thought it was crazy that you were the underdog. You proved everyone who thought that uh, right. And I, I, I hope to see you uh, continuing to climb the ladder there at 185. Thanks for coming yeah. on and, and thanks for doing this. I know you had to change your travel a little bit to do this. So I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. All good. Thank you so much for having me, Ariel. I really right. appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon, yeah. Nicholas. All right. Take care. Good, there he you. is, Nicholas Maximov, a uh, rising star in the middleweight division and a product of the Nick Diaz Academy.